The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was a disaster for Washington State, but Mount St. Helens is only one of five volcanoes in our state, and they are all considered active. Today, the rivers flow peacefully. The scenery, spectacular. But the beauty of Washington State is born of earthly violence. Clear running rivers become channels for deadly mud flows. The blue skies can choke with ash. Our green landscape turned black and white. In 1980, in a matter of two months, Mount St. Helens went from postcard perfection to angry devastation. It is not our only risk. In 2018, the latest National Volcano Threat Assessment was released. It ranks more than 161 volcanoes in the U.S., most of them in Alaska. The volcanoes in red are rated at very high risk. Orange is a less than comforting high risk. And on that list, this is how Washington's volcanoes rank. Mount Baker, threat level very high, ranking 14th. Glacier Peak, threat level very high, ranking 15th. Mount Rainier, threat level very high, ranking third highest. Mount St. Helens, threat level very high, ranking second highest. Mount Adams, threat level just high, ranking 34th. Adding in Mount Hood, south of the Columbia River in Oregon, threat level very high, ranking sixth. All these mountains are being monitored 24-7 at the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington. But they are not all at the same level. Where do you feel we are on that spectrum? It depends on the volcano. And at Mount St. Helens, we're pretty far along on that spectrum. Seth Moran is the scientist in charge at CVO. St. Helens is one of the world's most closely watched volcanoes. They're even testing drones that can sniff out volcanic gases. Seismometers pick up telltale earthquakes deep below. GPS stations that can determine if the mountain is distorting. All potential signs of a pending eruption. At St. Helens, we've got uh, ballpark 20 seismic stations, 20 GPS stations, a few webcams, uh, some infrasound for detecting airwaves. And I'm really responsible for understanding the signals that come in from the different monitoring networks on the different volcanoes and really just understanding what those signals are telling us and what that means for the volcanic hazards. Wes Thalen also worked at the nation's most dangerous volcano, Kilauea in Hawaii. Inside, I've got um, my instruments here. In 2015, geophysicist Ben Pauk gave me a tour of the kind of monitor hut CVO intends to deploy on Glacier Peak. Which then telemeters back to us in real time. Glacier Peak is huge, but it's so far east in Snohomish County, most of us never notice it. At Glacier Peak, the one of the big limitations going forward is currently there's only one seismometer. And five years later, there's still only one seismometer listening for telltale earthquakes under Glacier Peak. This volcano is also in a designated wilderness area. An instrument hut like this would have to be flown in by helicopter. Just one issue that has made getting permits to install remote instrumentation difficult. Clearly, we have less instruments on Baker and Glacier, and that's a concern. Uh, we have a permit that is going through uh, uh, the Forest Service at Glacier Peak. That is moving forward. But while Glacier Peak remains a mystery mountain to most of us, that doesn't mean it can't hurt us, especially through those mud flows known as lahars. This hazard map shows how a lahar from Glacier Peak would head west, hitting communities like Darrington, following the course of rivers like the Stillaguamish and the Skagit until reaching coastal communities, including Burlington and Stanwood. A lahar from Mount Baker would also flow down the Skagit as well as the Nooksack. Glacier Peak has a tremendous ashfall hazard as well, um, but the laharas can travel far downstream and affect communities. So we really need this early warning on these volcanoes and more monitoring is the key to that. Brian Turbush is a volcano scientist who works for Washington Emergency Management, seen here in a previous story in the days before social distancing. We have expressed our support that this is an important 
thing to install this in a wilderness area because it's an active volcano. We are getting there. The question now, how much time will the mountains give us? At Mount St. Helens, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. And if you would like to see more of the eruption of Mount St. Helens, we have an entire section with video, a virtual tour, and more on our website. For a link, it's really easy. Just text the word Helens to 206-448-4545.